welcome to Noob Splaining. My name is Wolf. If this is your first time here, this is where I explain the gloriously over the top world of Warhammer 40,000 that nerds like me love so much. So hit that subscribe button, grab a drink, settle in, and prepare for a Noob Splaining session. Today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on a piece of animation that has been described by many as a masterpiece, and I agree it is. That piece of animation being the highly acclaimed Astartes fan-made film. Now this is not going to be one of those watch-along type reviews, because, well, A, the entire film is officially behind the Warhammer Plus paywall, and I really don't want to provoke that bear with a sharp stick in the copyright strike department, and B, I don't actually have the software to do it at this moment in time. If you haven't seen it yet and have a Warhammer Plus subscription, go and watch it now. It is available via other means, but bear in mind the people who have it up on their channel had nothing to do with its creation, so I'm not going to put a link to where you can find it, as I don't feel it's right these people gaining views from someone else's animation. I know I hear you scream hypocrite, seeing as I'm talking about it right now. The difference is I'm reviewing it, which means I'm putting some work in, not loading the entire animation that somebody else did on my channel and sitting back to watch the views fly in. Anyway. Let's get on with this. This is your first, and only warning, there will be spoilers ahead. So the first part of Astartes, whilst being extremely short, picks up at the back end of a small uprising that has been mostly put down, as we follow two space marines walking down the corridor and entering a hatch. We then cut to a brief scene of a Mechanicum Tech Priest blessing a bolter. Back to the space marines now, and they are taking their places with the rest of the marines, who all get secured into place while an outer door opens, and if you're quick, you can spot the enemy ship trying to hide amongst the asteroids. And that's it. First part over. Now if you're new to 40k, you probably got excited about future parts. If you're experienced in 40k, not only were you super excited for more episodes, those brief images of the space marines told you a lot about the chapter we're dealing with here, which is why you should have been super excited. You see, space marines have a lot of pomp and bluster about them before going to war, and during it. They will all have a big get together before deploying, where they all stand in a circle holding hands and giving prayers to Emperor Chris. They will then take it in turns to give oaths of moment, which is basically their promise to the other space marines and to Emperor Chris what they will achieve in this battle. Things like, Brothers, in this moment I will bring righteous fury and deal death amongst the heretics in the name of Emperor Chris. Or, I swear to you, I will take the head of the Xenos leader, bringing the Emperor's wrath to the Xenos filth. Or things like, I will break the chapter's records on most orcs kicked in the balls in a single battle. Each of these oaths is then transcribed onto a parchment and attached to the marine's armour, giving them further zeal and motivation in battle. Then they will all embark on the boarding craft or landing craft together. You can guarantee some space marines somewhere will be carrying the company or chapter's battle standard like some medieval army. You look at older space marine armies, and even some of the current models, they still have banners. Most players complained how prone they were to being broke off though, so Games Workshop has cut back on them. You can still equip them as war gear in Dawn of War 2 as well. The other thing that Marine Chapters love is their heraldry. Their armour painted in bold colours, be it bright fucking blue or red, or whatever paint makes them stand out the most in the environments they will be operating in. The main thing that stands out for these retributors is they embarked as they were ready, so they don't go in for that whole pomp and bluster of declaring oaths of moment. They just get geared up and get on board. They also chose grey for their armour. Well, more accurately, they didn't choose a colour at all. They left the armour plain as it was the day it rolled off the production line. This tells me two things. The Retributors don't mess around with useless ceremonies, and they're here to get shit done. So holy shit, I can't wait for part two. So part two opens with a view from the top of the boarding craft, with a couple of drones for air defence and a fighter flying escort. After the drones take out the anti-air missiles, the boarding craft ignites its forward-facing melter weapons and just burns straight through the hull of the target ship. Yep, these retributors don't fuck about. We then see some traitor guardsmen running to defensive positions, when the space marines emerge from the light. Not all stealthy and not at run either, they just step into the light, bolters firing. Each shot taking out one of the defenders who futilely pour grum fire on these marines who don't even slow in their stride. Next there's a shot of one mopping up what's left, while the rest of the marines just fuck off to the next objective. We then get our first view of our two bad guys, who definitely look like psychers to me, sending the rest of the troops to their deaths against the space marines, and a lingering shot on some huge vault door. We then see two marines charging down a corridor, 
One breaks left to do the quickest room clearance in the history of mankind. The view changes to the end of the corridor, where the traitor guard are behind makeshift barricades, laying down as much fire as they can, and one launches an RPG. Every single guardsman is taken out with a single shot, no scope headshot, and the space marines casually turn to the side and let the RPG fly past them. We then get a shot of a 50 calibre rifle with a drum ammo box being charged by someone with bionic eyes hidden inside the walls of the ship, preparing an ambush. As the first marine enters the kill box, the 50 cal starts to fire. Thump, thump, thump. You can feel the recoil with every shot. The first two marines just carry on like nothing fucking happened. The third pauses and ends the ambush with two shots. Those first two just ran through 50 cal fire like it's nothing. Next we get to see how brutally effective space marines actually are, as this one with a bolt pistol is taking out people with single shots. He then knifes a potential suicide bomber who's trying to sneak up on him. Meanwhile, the defenders have set up a mobile heavy twin last gun platform a few levels above on a rain down at the corridor the space marines are about to emerge from. Now, a twin las gun might just ruin these marines' day. The defenders near the marines at this point are sick of watching their buddies explode and decide to leg it, and start running away straight into the line of fire of the twin las gun. The guy operating it clearly knows Astartes are butchering all his mates, and sees movement but manages to hold fire until he sees a space marine. The second he does, he lets rip with the twin las guns, shredding what's left of his mates while shots ping off the space marine's power armor. The space marine spins into cover, throws a smoke grenade and pulls out a plasma pistol. No longer able to see any targets, the twin las gunner stops firing. Huge fucking mistake, as the space marines can see through the smoke, with the sophisticated targeting equipment in their helmets. The space marine nonchalantly stands in the middle of the corridor and fires a single shot through the smoke taking the entire gun platform out, and killing the last of the traitor guard defending the ship. Next we see our two bad guys, who look like psychers, almost stood back to back in the cargo bay. The space marines are spread out all around them in the shadows, and are reloading their bolters. A quick nod from one of the marines and they go to work. Anyway, this isn't supposed to be a play-by-play -play narration, it's my thoughts. So, for the rest of it, I will ego watch it, but god damn that fight scene with the psychers? After that, there are still quite a few holy shit moments, including a brief glimpse of what could be one of the ancient AIs, the Men of Gold, and some kind of sentient yet powerful sphere that is clearly very afraid of space marines, with just fucking reason I might add. All the time the space marines carry on because they got shit to do, and they ain't paid by the hour. I will tell you this though, the ending leaves you wanting more. The action in this animation is amazing, and every time I watch it I notice some small detail I didn't notice before. Like the two marines who reload before attacking the psychers, I only spotted one the first time. A few marines take hits from las guns, and it does nothing, just harmly spatters off their armour. The sound of each bolter shot is accompanied with a wet explosion sound of a bolt around detonating inside some poor bastard. The main thing though, is just the sheer quality of it all. It's so well polished, and looks like it came out of a AAA studio with Hollywood levels of budget. Nope. One man, Sima Peterson, did this, all on his own out of the love for this universe. And Games Workshop, instead of using it as a tool to get more people into the game, they locked it behind a fucking paywall. So if you're new to 40k and haven't watched the starters yet, go watch it now. If you're unsure how fast a marine moves, how brutally effective they are, and how goddamn focused they are on getting the job done, yet dealing with all potential threats at the same time, I think of no better way to demonstrate these facts than this utterly superb animation. With it now being behind the Warhammer Plus paywall, is it enough for me to pay for a Warhammer Plus subscription? No, it is unfortunately only 13 minutes long. I begrudge paying Disney Plus for the multiple hours of Star Wars and Marvel available in its streaming service. If I had a few hundred dollars stuffed down the back of the sofa I'd forgotten about, then I might pay for it for that and the Army Builder tool, and some of the other things available on Warhammer Plus might make it worth it. But I digress, I'm not trying to take anything away from this amazing piece of animation especially when you know it was created by just one person. I would say go and have a look, and you should, but unless you have a Warhammer Plus subscription, you're basically giving money to someone who does not deserve it. But if you don't have a Warhammer Plus sub, how are you going to watch it? Slammer Peterson, if you're watching this, this is for you. What you made on your own was an absolute masterpiece and a complete work of art. As a fan of the 40k universe, I thank you for what you did bringing it to us all and allowing us to see such this amazing content. It's a shame Games Workshop won't let you put anything else like this out into the public.
And there we have it. That brings us to the end of this video. If you laughed or learned anything, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you are already subscribed, then don't forget to share this video with somebody who could do with some noob explaining in their life. Also, leave a comment on your favourite part. I do try and interact with every comment. But if you made it this far, thank you, and I'll see you next time.